with Ryan Reese from Southern California. This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. My good friends back in town of Pittsburgh. Josh Sturm and Lacey Sturm. Hey, buddy. Hi, I said the name right. Too. And you said we're from Pittsburgh, not Philly. I know. Well, <laughs> Pennsylvania, you know. Pens- Pittsburgh Steelers, number one team. Woo-hoo. It's true. Do you like Pittsburgh? I do. I like Pittsburgh. I'm not a big sports fan, but I'll always root for whatever sports teams are in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I know. I, whatever they're called. You got the Pirates. Yeah. Penguins. Yeah. I'm not Penguins. Pirates. Pirates. Steelers. Pirates and Steelers. Teams. Riverhounds. I think they do something out there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we like won a we won a cup, we World Cup, right? Hockey? World Cup hockey. I don't know. <laughs> I don't follow hockey. I won't know. Well, listen, our bass player cup. was was watching. Is it not called the World Cup? It's called no, it's some, Stanley Cup. Stanley Cup. So, <laughs> so good. our bass player on stage, we're playing our show, and um, and he's like keeps going back to his bass, and I'm thinking something's wrong, and I have to turn around and look and realize he's, he's watching, watching a game. He's watching <laughs> the Stanley Cup on his during our show. <laughs> yeah, he's watching them. The no, players. when yeah. was this? Oh, well, where, where is this like the last tour? Four, four, well, four years ago. It was crazy. Dang, <laughs> that's funny because you know because we because we do the show on Saturday night. So whenever whenever there's a UFC fight, mm-hmm. uh, we'll be watching like the fight stuff before the show. I can't watch yeah. that stuff. Oh, I love it. I'm like that's my that's like somebody's baby boy. I can't watch them hurt each other. It's a sport. <laughs> I know. Right? It's fun. I, you yeah. know what I love about those? Just side to side notes. Like after they beat each other up, then they give each other like a high five or whatever. And they're like, "Good, you got me. You got yeah. me." Yeah. <laughs> Only guys can do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I know. it's awesome. It's a man thing, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's just not a me thing. <laughs> some guys aren't into it. Some girls aren't into it. That's I love right. it. I love fighting. <laughs> In Jesus' name. We should no. start fighting, <laughs> fighting on your show. Let's blood. do it. Yeah. <laughs> so what have you guys been up to? Okay, well, first of all, let me break it down. Um, Lacey, you were part of a band called Flyleaf. Yeah. And uh, you guys blew up. You guys did amazing things. I met you a long time ago. Um, were you, guys, you guys were dating when I met you. Yeah. So that was in, I met you in 2007. Eight. Eight. 2008 through Michael Guido right. at a fairground. That's right. Maybe, I don't think, if, I don't know if it was in your own city, but no. you guys were playing at a fair. I remember that. And Oak Ridge Boys you. were playing there. Flyleaf who? Playing. The Oak Ridge Boys. I don't know who that is. It's an old <laughs> band. So I, play, I met you guys backstage there. <laughs> Just for the record, you, I wasn't water baptized at that point. Okay. And you, you told me him. you got baptized and there yeah. was like a shift, something happened. It was great. And I remember catching a plane back from wherever we were i think we were in where were we tech was it texas i think oklahoma so. texas yeah, somewhere yeah, you guys yeah, were yeah, somewhere right. and i flew all the way back home and it was winter and i remember calling my dad on my layover saying i'm coming to your house i'm getting baptized today when i land i'm Aww. driving from lax wow. awesome. i don't know if you know the story i drove that from lax to my dad's house an hour he baptized me sean mckeon showed up out of nowhere my dad baptized me i stripped down to my boxers in the back of his house in the pool and the pool, seriously, was like 53 degrees. It was frozen. <laughs> Commitment. I should have just got baptized in the summertime. <laughs> no, it was frozen. Right it was not enjoyable. But there was a shift. Right? It was sick. Yes. Right? It was special. I always say it's so something thank you. you can point to. You know, I was baptized twice before that. First time I was young, I don't remember. Second time, I don't remember. I, I don't remember why I did it the first two times. Yeah. The third time was right before we got married. And I was just like, I want... I want to have a moment I can point to whenever the devil comes at me with something and he's like, oh, what about this in your life? Or what about this? Like, no, 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 that died. I remember that. I have, I have photos of that day. That's gone. Yes. You do. yes. It's like evidence you can point to. So that's why it was important for me to do it. Because a lot of people ask, have I been baptized when I was a baby? Do I need to do it again? And you were, you were baptized in your dare shirt. Dare to keep kids off drugs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. How old were you? I was 28, maybe. And this is right before you got married. Yeah. And what's cool about water baptism is it's it has to be special where you, you do look at it and you're like, you know what? I'm all in. That's the way I kind of look at it. Like, yeah. I'm all in, and this is me telling the world I'm all in. Yeah. yeah. You know? Because I've been baptized, too, um, a couple times when I was younger. Yeah. Or I re- actually, one time, I remember one time getting baptized, and I was in the Jordan River. I was real young. And right when I got done getting baptized, I went to the car, and my Dad shut the door and slammed my fingers in the door. I was like, bad memory. <laughs> but I didn't even walk. I was. I didn't even walk with God. You know what I mean. Yeah. So now moving forward to when yeah. I was thirty, 
What needs to die? 30, year, right? yeah, 30 years old, that's when it was like the real deal. And it was because of you. Yeah. I was all about baptism for a while. Everybody was like, you need to get baptized. You need to get baptized. You actually baptize somebody in the winter. In a, yeah, in a, in, I baptized a, a friend of mine in the stream Frozen in the lake. wintertime. You thought it was cold when you did it. This yeah. was like probably 30 degrees. <laughs> it was great. I just put my hands under, but heat went all the way under. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, something changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Frozen. Dude, exactly right. <laughs> When uh, since we're talking about water baptism, we got an hour. So, what? When did you get baptized? I did get baptized when I was sixteen, around that time when I. That's was, right when you got saved. Right when I first became Christian, you're at mm. the story of when I, uh, tried, I thought I planned to commit suicide and I had yeah. that encounter with God. It was shortly after that um, I did get baptized and I did feel a difference in my life. There was but, a shift. But I also um, went through the season of deception where I when I was in an affair and wrote about it, the mystery, you know? And uh, the Lord showed me my foundation of my salvation was rooted in emotions. And that's why I was able to get away from Christ when my emotions led me a different place. Mm -hmm. So he was showing me in this situation, before this hits you, you're following me. But then once this hits you, it showed that you're, you weren't following. It's just more the, emotional. Right, so are you gonna choose to follow me now? So it was a new, um, a new commitment in a sense to who Jesus is outside of whatever my emotions tell me. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I, when Josh got baptized that day, I got baptized too. And I committed to a fresh start with the Lord and that old me that was, you know, died in the water and rose again. And it felt like huge difference too. Mm -hmm. And in my, how my God was my emotions. It was like, that was, that, that wasn't anymore. Like I wasn't making an idol out of, just my feelings and it was so freeing too because mm. I felt like a slave to whatever whims of whatever I was feeling mm. and now I feel like hey you know what like David said uh, soul why are you get downcast within me uh, put your hope in God you know mm -hmm. he says that because he's Dude, that's amazing yeah and you were just talking about your book so for people that are listening you have you came from the band Flyleaf you did that mm -hmm. then you took uh, some time off mm -hmm. you were you were having babies yeah several babies you did some stuff with uh, the Billy Graham Association, yeah. right? Franklin Graham. Then you wrote books. Yeah. What are the books? It's Josh's fault. Plug the books so they can find them. Actually, I just the girl, the, there's a girl that lives with me. I just gave her your book. Which one? The, um, the first one. The yeah, reason. the first one. It's a trilogy one. now. Which oh, gosh. I know. Well, look, here, plug, so plug them so people could. She's terrible at plugging. I'm going to plug okay, them for Josh, her. Okay, Josh. Here, plug commercials. Like commercial. <laughs> I'm like, I'm your commercial guy, honey. <laughs> okay, do it. Pl plug it all so the listeners can find it. I'll tell you that, and you tell in the content. So Lacey yeah. always says, <laughs> if I could tell the world one uh, if thing. If you can't see Lacey, she's under the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't want to write a book because what was happening, we'd play shows or we'd do speaking events, and yeah. after the show, everybody would start asking her questions and want to spend time with her. And I'm like, honey, this is not sustainable. Like, you yeah. can't spend, or she'd get an email from someone and spend three hours responding to this email. Right. I'm like, this isn't sustainable. You need to find a way to, like, talk to people like you're having a conversation with them because you can't be there for everybody so you should write a book that way people can have your story and have all these questions because a lot of people ask her the same exact same questions, questions right yeah. yep. and a lot of it was about her testimony and stuff like that and so I convinced her to write a book which ended up being quite a process even for me because I was helping her with the editing and all that kind of stuff but um did you have a ghostwriter we didn't help? have a ghostwriter. We had a editor who helped. Editor, got so it. Like, so you wrote it all, and then they helped kind of. Exactly. She was, that was very important. Yeah, Tim Willard um, is an amazing writer, and he could have ghostwritten the whole book. But what was important is because Lacey's so that was proposed, authentic actually. and genuine, we didn't want it to look like someone else wrote her book. Absolutely. Very much wanted to be in her voice and yeah. her words. She's Has very to. careful with her words. Yep. Um, so the first book is called The Reason. That one deals with, you know, her story of getting, being rescued from suicide and her encounter with God, a little bit of her story of her upbringing. Um, her second book is called The Mystery, which mm -hmm. is about dating and marriage and a divorce, affair, all that kind of stuff related to romance. Um, and then her newest book is called The Return, so they all start with The, the Reason, The Mystery, oh, The Return. Gosh. That was awesome. And The Return is, um, I like this book because it goes back to that you know, how did you become a rock star? A lot of people, they meet you really quickly, and they're just like, they have 30 seconds with you. They're like, hey, how did you become a radio host, or how did you start yeah. doing this? And you're like, there's kind of a lot to it. Well, mm -hmm. to start here, I need to tell you my whole story. That's so this cool. book kind of shows different, each chapter is like a different journal entry into her life, starting when she was like 16 years old, of like, this is how I stewarded 
when I was 16 years old and I was working as a babysitter and a waitress, you know, because like all these things in my life were important to how I got to where I am today. Yeah. Each one was me saying yes to God at each step of the way because everyone sees the end result and they're like, how'd you get there? Yeah. You're like, well, in order to get there, this is what I did and this yeah. is the path that led me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was a really cool kind of vulnerable way for her to show like her journal entries and the different decisions she made along the way. So those are the three books available are, anywhere you can buy books. Are they uh, are they they on audio Bible as well? Yeah, actually they're all on audio. audio. Did I say audio Bible? Yeah. Audio book. Audio book. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't even the, catch it either. I was like, oh, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The reason the first book was uh -huh. read by someone else, the second book, the the mystery and the return were read by her. Yeah, I didn't know they were gonna. Was that normal? Hire somebody else to read that first. Oh, one. really? That was hard for me to. No, they did that because I'm like, don't don't let nobody else talk about my mama. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I want to talk about yes, it. Yes, <laughs> yes. But it was she did a really good job reading uh, it. Is it? Is it uh, I wouldn't even listen to it. Was, yeah. was it was it difficult for uh, for you to read it to it, do that, to, to actually record it? She killed it. Did it you wasn't read that bad. Uh, no, because it's in the process right now. Okay. It, it wasn't that bad. It was actually all she right. Did two books, both books in two days. Well, I also have been in the studio a lot. You know, what you're I mean? used to it. Yeah. But I, I, I think I'm glad because, you know, I would want to hear it in the author's voice. Yeah, 100 percent. Yes. So I'm glad I just wanted it for people who won't have the chance to read it that maybe have a long commute or whatever. Yeah. And they they would listen. So, um, yeah, so. for sure. That's that's a lot of people go through audio books. Oh, yeah. I go through audio yeah. books fast. So, like, I thought the three things that I would want to address with people mm -hmm. would be. If you had one thing to tell the world, they always say, mm. that's what you write the book about, you know? So the first thing I would want to tell is about my salvation and about yeah. how that's for anybody. And then the second thing is about how romance, if we don't have that, if we don't filter that through God's intention, will wreck our life. <laughs> and then the third thing, because that derails you almost mm -hmm. immediately yep. after you get saved. Uh -huh. And then the third yep. thing is um, your calling. You know, and how you steward, what, how do you love God back with your life? How do you love him back? Like, yeah, he, he loves you. You hear that all the time. God loves you. But do you love him back? What mm -hmm. does that look like to love him back? Mm -hmm. And, like, it's not like, do I work up this love? But, like, do I know how much he loves me that to the point where I'm like, how can I love you back, God? I just want to love you back. Because mm -hmm. you do when you feel that love. Yep. When you feel in awe of somebody, you want to serve them. And you want to, you know, what can I do for you? Yep. And that's where he, he blesses you, too, is when you step out by faith and you just give him your life and say, all right, God, whatever you want to do, I want to do whatever you have for me. Yeah. And that's, then that's when you start living the impossible. That's exactly <laughs> right. You know this journey, right? I, this yeah. adventure. Yep. Because it is. It's like he'll say, um, okay, I want you to do this. First of all, I never wanted to be a musician. Mm -hmm. I, I, my, my mom always tried to be a musician. I mean, she was a musician, but we were in poverty because of it. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm make money, you know, yep. buy groceries, you know. Yeah. But um, but it's interesting because um, God, when I said whatever you want, God, I gave him everything. Like I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna babysit for you. I'm gonna wait tables and you know, just in order to love you, I'm gonna love people. You know, I'm gonna clean my granny's kitchen or whatever. And I talk about that in the book. You know, see how you say yes Being to faithful God in the small things, for right? anything. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's what it looks like. It doesn't look like I'm a singer. It doesn't look like I'm a writer. Although that's the few thing most people know me for. Yeah. It looks like I love Jesus back. I love him. I want to love him. And so I want to say yes, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So if it means he's saying, I want you to stand on stage today, then, um, then I say yes. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, means I'm going to fall on my face, which he never does that. Yeah. Except for maybe a couple of times in Flyleaf and, uh, yeah, and getting hit by guitars or, you know, falling over because I'm dancing story. crazy. I remember that. Or just not having a voice sounding really terrible. If he said go, it's on him, right? Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm not here to, you know, and if, and if I do really great, it's on him still. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so it's not the praise, the criticism goes to him when we say yes. It's mm -hmm. when we don't say yes that we have to worry about it. <laughs> yep. But when we say yes, it's all on him, you know? Mm -hmm. so. so as you, uh, so you got these books out. Everyone needs to go buy them all. Go buy all three tonight. <laughs> okay. Tri the trilogy. Get the trilogy oh now. Are you working on more books? Well, what I'm doing right now is um, 
with that book, The Return, yep. I put before each chapter, there's 12 chapters, and before each chapter, I did a page of my journal about how I started my day in the morning reading the Bible and ended my day reading the Bible. <clears throat> because I, I talk about how I was a, you know, I was a really a smart aleck kid, mm -hmm. and I would always, I never would believe anything anybody said unless I could figure out, like, okay, yeah, wh why? Like, h how do you know that? You know, yeah. I, I wanna see for myself. And so one of the things that I think, you know, people, the, the pastor says, open your Bibles to chapter four of Mark and read with me. And it's not so people can feel embarrassed they don't have a Bible or they can feel proud because I got my Bible. It's because he's like, I'm not making this up. It's in there. You read it. Yeah. And if I'm saying it out of context, tell me what it says. You can find out for yourself. You know, this is the cool thing about the gospel is that it's not telling you to follow Ryan Reese or Lacey yeah. Sturm. Yeah. It's telling you to follow Jesus. And here's the scriptures. It's like your constitution or rights. Yeah. You know, it's so you mm -hmm. can see for yourself. And so for me, I'm like, we, if I go to church and I hear somebody say something, I'm like, why are you saying that? Where, how do you know that? Where is it? I'm going to read it mm -hmm. for myself. So, yeah. so I started doing this just to know for sure. And I uh, was obsessed with the Bible because everything that was going on in my mind, it would, it would speak to me like I was alive. Right. And so what I want to teach kids when they decide, oh yeah, I really like uh, that message. I feel like come alive, something come alive in me. Um, what, so what now? You know, I want to teach them, you know, yes, it's good to be a part of a church and it's yes, good to learn from people. Um, but there's also some important part of you standing on your own feet in your relationship with Jesus. And you, you can do this by knowing the scripture. You can hear his voice for yourself by knowing his word in the Bible. Is this is this the the website, um, the discipleship thing? Reflect Love Back. So that okay, so that's all part of that. So that's where the songs come from as well. Right. So the okay. twelve chapters in the book. Okay. We did a twelve week video devotional series that right. goes with the chapters in the book, but you don't have to read the book to do the series. And where this is all online. Yeah. So what if you sign up? And you can do it two ways. You can go to the website every morning, every evening, and sign in, and or it, you know it'll keep you signed in or whatever. You just yeah. click on the morning, and it'll be a commentary that talks about the scriptures, and it's like ten minutes. Sometimes it's a little le more, sometimes it's less. About around ten minutes in the morning, and then we have a journal that goes a page for each commentary. So it's like a twenty hundred twenty eight. Um, 128 page journal because it goes for 12 weeks morning and evening mm -hmm. so in the evening there's a bible script video which i call it i made it up because <laughs> the name bible script did one. yeah you did that's it. what those videos are yeah. yes okay so you just you just get somebody who crystal looked, did one too that's yes right. she did james um and you did the one at timothy i think i don't remember yeah i'm old <laughs> <laughs> no you're not <laughs> um Yes. Okay. So you have those t as well that go along with it. So every day, so every morning, so like that was the most important thing in my relationship with Jesus. Mm. No matter how far off I got, if I went back to that, I would come back to the Lord and I would find truth. Every time I felt myself questioning what was going on in my life, I could go back to the scripture and find truth. Right. If I felt like the Lord led me into a place or the spirit was leading me, or I had these feelings here and there, I could, I mean, especially in that time when I talk about the mystery, um, how I had made my feelings in, uh, an idol in my life. <clears throat> and I had really followed the God of my feelings because God was so emotionally powerful in that salvation experience. Yeah. But the second time that that was rocked to the core, um, I, it, was, it, was, it was me going, just like in a marriage, you get to a point in your marriage where you look at your spouse and you don't have the same feelings and you have to choose. Mm. Or am I gonna keep the covenant or am I gonna follow my feelings? Yeah. You know, and then to remember how your relationship and how all the things you've been through, to remember your love, that's what happened to me. I talk about in the mystery, the second book, how in that moment of asking, am I gonna keep following Jesus? Or am I gonna follow my emotions that say I don't know? What, what when talking about the emotions, what you know, what were like some of the issues just for like the listeners uh -huh. when, when it comes when you're saying we wanna send them to the book, obviously, mystery. But yeah. what were these emotions that mm -hmm. were uh, how, how this, um, the affair, what, what was, what was the effect of the emotions, with your relationship uh -huh. with, with God? Okay. Well, when I first became a Christian, I physically felt his presence. I was, okay. I was in a sense, I had a spiritual experience. Yeah. I, and I, there's a lot of people that have that. <laughs> yes. 
And so what I felt was, and I keep, and I would say it the whole time, I felt his presence. Yes. I was in his presence, and it almost like I could see him as a great holy light. Mm-hmm. Um, anytime I would want to um, come, I would. I mean, I was addicted to that feeling. Before that, I yeah. I was into whatever made me feel whatever. Yeah. So now I felt that high in church, like I never felt from any drugs. How, how long was that? This? How long was this sticking around? The f- presence. The presence. Anytime yeah. I would go okay. to the Lord, I could rock right into that. Okay. And then was there a point when it just kind of disappeared for a while? I do remember the first time that I um, chose to resist that joy. And it was when I was with um, <clears throat> this guy that um, was actually the, the guy I was married to, the f- first marriage I was mm-hmm. in. And... Um, I was, he was getting frustrated about uh, his car being broke down. And I thought it was funny because I'm all like, we're on an adventure with Jesus. What are you going to do now, Jesus? And he mm-hmm. gets frustrated and I'm, I'm laughing at him because he's really like kind of pitching a fit. And I'm like laughing at how funny he looks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I feel like, oh, like you're being really rude. You know, he's probably going to like, it's probably going to make us worse if you laugh at him. Yes. <laughs> but it was so funny. But then I thought, okay, so I'm just going to pretend like I'm mad too. Oh yeah, it sucks. You know, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, I, I was going through the motions of, of, for, you know, trying to have compassion for him and ended up, I remember that was the first time I chose not to have joy. And that was when that, I think I broke with that, um, constant uh freedom from Mm. i mean i just held joy all the time and i remember that moment when i chose that and then of course it would come and go according to when i would seek the lord but then when i um what happened was i was i was uh i felt really isolated and alone and um in i misunderstood and um i didn't have and so with this relationship and I talk about in the mystery, this person met a lot of my emotional needs mm-hmm. of needing to be understood, of needing to be um, seen, uh, not feeling lonely, um, things that, that they understood that nobody else seemed to understand in my life. And, I, and this person felt the same way. And this was after flight. <clears throat> this was before. Before flight, got it. Yeah. Um, and, and also, you know, you know, I said the, I, I, I'm just, oh, actually, I was, I was already in the band, yeah. um, but it was more towards the beginning. So, uh, yeah. um, so I was really just trying to, um, to meet an emotional need through an inappropriate outlet, yeah. and the enemy would do that, you know. So. All right. Well, let's send people to the book then. Yeah, so because the because the, because the the truth is, you know, there's a way that seems right to you, in the end, it leads to death. Yeah. And it was the book of it was, really, it was the scripture, like I said, the book of Jude, that helped me get out of it, uh, and recognize how I was following a deception, and all of those feelings of being able to enter into His presence, God's presence, I couldn't feel Him anymore. I feel like he went silent in my life, and the only place I could get that full feeling was in this relationship. And oh. but I also, f- it it's true that no God is God enough to be God for you except God Himself. Hmm. So even this person was failing me in fulfilling me uh, emotionally, uh, and I couldn't fulfill them either. Hmm. And I was trying to be God for them, and it wasn't. I wasn't able to, <clears throat> and God wouldn't allow it. He doesn't allow that. He'll only let that go so far. He's like, you're going to recognize you. this is this is what I told you it was. It's leading to death. Mm-hmm. So you have to make a choice of life or death, you know? And I've, seen, I've seen some, I've seen several people, uh, you know, they're, they're walking by the God and then they, they get, they try to fill that, that emptiness or that, that place, replace what they had with God with a relationship. Yeah. You know, they leave the church, and then they end up, who knows what, you know. Well, that's what I want. It's common. That's how the enemy does it. But as soon as you recognize you're wrong, the condemnation that comes is so, I just want to cry thinking about it. The condemnation that comes is, like, so hard because it it was immediately back to the suicidal place. Wow. Like, I was set free from suicide. Yeah. But immediately, I was like, I don't want to live. I don't want to live. I don't want to take... Because what happened was uh, I had to choose. This person was threatening suicide if I, if I did, if I left them, and I felt like I was leaving Jesus. Wow. 
if I stayed. So I had to make a choice, and I was like, I'm... That is gnarly. So It's a gnarly position to be in. Well, the reason why it even had an effect on me is because I thought that this guy's life was in my hands. That's a lie. Yeah. It's not. We yeah. don't save people. Jesus yeah. does. Yep. He's the only one. Mm -hmm. we, we put ourselves in Jesus' seat, and then we realize we can't do it. Yeah. That's gross to sit in his seat and expect you can be God. That's what devil, the devil tries to do. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, don't worry. You don't need Jesus. You just need me. And even if we use Jesus' language and we still think that it's us, then it's God will continue to shake that up because he shakes everything that can be shaken until only what can't be shaken remains. Mm -hmm. And so he brings the fire of his love into our life and it burns out everything that's not worth, that's not eternally worth something. It's worth nothing. You're building, you're putting all your energy and building into something that's eternally worth nothing. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it's going to get burned up. At the end, see what comes through the fire. Right, so yeah. we have to build what's worth something, and that relationship I was building was totally based on something that was not going to last, because mm -hmm. it, it was it was away from God. There's no there's no life outside of God, and so what I realized is, <clears throat> once I, I I realized I'm I'm about to die, you know I'm about to, I thought to my and the Lord intervened, and I talk about that in the book how He intervened in that moment. I was closer to suicide than than I was the first time that's crazy he just and, came like a floodgate and Melanie was in my life at the time and Melanie God gave Melanie a vision of me and she had everybody pray for me um, in that moment and she saw exactly where I was exactly what I was doing and interceded for me and God brought somebody into my life um, heavy that that had the words to say of understanding Cause see, I would always say, you don't understand us. You know, people would say, you probably shouldn't be in this relation. I'm like, no, it's you don't understand. You know, it's, it's he's going through something so hard. Nobody understands him. I'm the only one. And then this person came in, this spiritual papa yeah. named Rob. He's with the Lord now. But he came in and he was like, I want to tell you a story about how I thought that I was supposed to be with this woman because we... He just walked up and, and told you. No, well, I, I, he knew. He knew. What was there going was a, on. Yeah, but, but there was a prayer for it, yeah. But usually when he talked to me, I just heard him say, you're going to, you need to turn, repent. You know, oh, I never, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but this time he was like, let me tell you about my own story. And so telling testimony is really important. Yeah. He's like, I thought I was supposed to be with this woman because pop culture will tell you your soulmate out there is what life is all about. And your romantic soulmate is really what you're looking for in this life. When in reality, in heaven, we're not even going to be married like we're here, mm -hmm. we are here. Romance is just a metaphor for relationship with Jesus. So if you try to do romance outside of Jesus, you're going to get it all mixed up. Yeah. So like here we are. I mean, you totally, that's, that's the idea. But with, with this person, he said, I was in this relationship with a friendship with this woman, and she was the only one that got me. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I know what that's like. And I, she would speak my mind like she was reading it. And what I found out is that we have similar spiritual gifts when really my gift is really unique. And hers is just as unique, but just because we look the same because of our spiritual gift doesn't mean anything about our romantic life. It doesn't have nothing to do with our soul being meant to be together. Mm. I mean, it has to do with Jesus making a sister in Christ that looks like me. And it has nothing to do with romance. And I was like, wow, I didn't even know that was even a thing. Like, you could say that about it. Because mm. to me, I thought what it means is you need to avoid that person because you're gonna end up romantic with them, which is true sometimes. Yeah. Or it means that you're supposed to be in romance with them. Because that's what the movies tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And what the truth was is that actually had nothing to do with what God was, it, it, it had nothing to do with romance. And me and this relationship with this person didn't either. Right. We're married. coming up to the break. I wanna plug the Whosoever's app. It's free for all you listeners. It has all the past shows. Uh, for the last couple of years, it actually has our store. If you want to purchase our product, that supports our movement. And our mission is the Great Commission. And um, just keeps you guys updated on everything that's going on. Obviously, the show is um, not only on the radio, but it's a live video feed too. So you could see us in the studio interacting with each other. I love you guys. 
See you guys after. More live with Ryan Reese coming up. Everything all right? Sure. Call now. 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say whoop de doo Back to live with Ryan Reese. Don't say what I warn you. Loud noises. Look at if we're strengthened in the in Christ. Yeah. We're each empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's a, that's the Trinity. The Godhead is in is is able to. And people, a lot of people don't believe in the power. They don't they don't they don't trust that uh, it's it's working. They feel like it's all on them. Right. You know. Yeah. You so don't. you know, people also with reflect love back. I know. People are on their phones all the time, so I wanted to make it real easy yeah. to um, spend time with God in the morning and at night. And, it, and it's not that I think you should be on I wish it wasn't on a phone. But if you're going to be on the phone, let me spoon feed you. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's where everyone's at. So, okay, so if people want to find this, mm -hmm. they need to go to what website? Reflectlowback.com. Reflect Reflect and Reflect they back. sign in every... Yeah, well, we just changed it, actually. We're really excited about the new format because... By the way, this is uh, Josh Husband. Hi, I'm Josh, <laughs> Lacey's husband. Yay. Guitar Hi, player, Josh. tours with tours with what, what bands? What band? Well, you've been touring with some bands. I got to go out with Shine Down yeah. twice. Again, yeah, that's right. Man. Again, I love those guys. Amazing. So much fun. Great guys. I love it when I see those photos. I'm like, yes, it's yeah. awesome. So anyway, um, Shredder. So yeah, was it? Were we talking about guitars? <laughs> <laughs> Shredding. Gear. Shredding. Shredding on a world gear, tour yeah, somewhere. Camera gear. <laughs> um, Reflectlowback.com is where everything's at, and we just changed it recently, which I'm really excited about because the the original intent, what we tried to do, was this 12 week video series. Yeah. Um, which is very ambitious. Let me just say that 12 weeks of videos, 144 Don't videos. Don't say that. It's just talking How many about videos? Jesus. 144 videos. It's ambitious. <laughs> you guys are hardcore. Thank you. <laughs> Josh. Lacey doesn't do anything halfway. <laughs> no. I don't know. Josh um, is making. Yeah. And any video editors listening, editing a 12 minute video takes a long time. So yes. Um, okay. So so let me just say, nobody wanted to do this. And Josh was just trying to be a good sport. And I'm like, look, God said to feed the flock, and I want them to know how to read the Bible. And if this is the only way, we're going to do it. And if you don't want to do it, that's fine. Just set the camera up. I'll just talk. Was that the Book of Mormon, he said? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe Listen, it. It's not the Book of Mormon. The amazing Check thing it. about all this is that Lacey has enough to say to fill 140 videos. Oh, God. Yeah, like, any question you ask her, Help she'll me, be Jesus. like, well, this is the scripture that answered that question for me. I, like, I love that about my wife. She, yeah. just, she finds that, that wisdom 
like she's talking about, because she's been through so much deception in so many yeah. different areas of her life yeah. that she's had to go to the scripture to find the answer. And myself included, there's a lot of people out there who don't know how to find answers to themselves in the Bible. You have yeah. to ask someone, and their opinion's obviously filtered through whatever they've been through. What they, yeah, yeah. And so, like, the big difference in what we're trying to do with Reflect Love Back is to always point them back to the Scriptures. God has an answer for you in this. You know what I mean? We're going to help nudge you along the way, but he, it's ultimately report, pointing you back to His Word, His not not our books and stuff like not that. Not our opinions. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah. Um, and so the... A lot of people who are doing the 12-week study, it starts on day one, ends on day 144. Some of them were starting to get overwhelmed because it's like, oh, I'm behind, you know, I'm on week three, I'm supposed to be on week seven. And so we honestly, we just changed it to a subscription like Netflix now, where it's like we have 160 videos, we're going to upload, upload new videos every single week, and for fourteen ninety nine a month, you can just log in and check out whatever topic and, you want. Fourteen ninety nine? I thought it was $10. No, that's for people who already bought it. So uh, okay. So, yeah. What do I, I know? I'm so not the you, commercial. <laughs> So it's a subscription. So you could just go in and just go through the series at your own speed. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a Netflix database is what it is, and you can that, even search better. like then, if you're looking. Yeah, because people get like lost. I mean, well, because you you have to start at day one and then go through to the end. This yeah. way, you can just look up by topic. Like, hey, I want to see every video related to divorce or oh. to finances, and you just look at those tags like you would on YouTube and yeah. it pulls up every video that talks about that. Which I don't think I talk so, about divorce or finances. Just those were bad examples. <laughs> <laughs> just bad examples. Those are not in there, but... No, don't depression, search those two words. You can look up depression. You can look up about you know, romance. And yeah. The things it just we makes it more about. accessible too. I mean, yeah. we, we played in a rock band for so long. What you're long. going through at that time, if you're going through one of those things, you just yeah. look it up, boom, hone in on it. Yeah. And so, and you can still do the 12 week study. Cause mm -hmm. like that, the, the heart of the 12 week study was she wanted to teach people how to meet with God in the morning and at nighttime. Yeah. And that's like, that's Psalm one. That's the story of success of like when you're rooted in the word, it's to, everything you do will prosper. Meditate yeah. on day and yeah. night. Everything yeah. you do will prosper. And it so says it that, in Joshua like, too. Joshua anytime one. Lacey and I are practicing that, where we read the word in the morning and at nighttime, everything prospers. And so that's like the heart behind it. And so how getting simple. people into that rhythm of how to do it, it is such a simple concept. Obviously, schedules and things get in the Time way. management. Whatever it is, having triplets. <laughs> you know, stuff like that makes it more difficult. So actually, I want to ask you that question. Yeah. So having triplets now... How has that changed the way that you're able to meet uh, with God? I never read the Bible. Okay. <laughs> never study. Okay. Just joking. Um, it's uh, I have I just have a program like you know for me it's oh, my life has always been very crazy jumping back and forth uh, going to meeting with different people so I'm in Southern California so I drive a lot so my when I'm driving I'm just constantly burning through Bible studies I have awesome. I have I downloaded the the app of. Uh, Chuck Smith, it's Genesis to Revelations. He has all the different series, Acts in Depth, Romans in Depth, Ephesians in Depth. He has the different, you know. Um, so what I do is I just constantly just continue going through the whole Bible through studies. Yeah. And then, you know, I travel a lot, so I'm on planes a lot. So when I'm on planes, I get to do that, get to read. And, and uh, again, I live in my car. Yeah. So that's that's my home. I and mean, when I'm at home, dude, it's like crazy. You know, you have three kids, you have three yeah. boys. Yeah. Uh huh. You know. Yeah. So for me, I I don't do it at the house. I'm I do it when I'm in my car and the audio Bible too. Wish Crystal yeah. was here to ask her. Huh? Crystal, she gets it at night. She's doing it at night when she or in the morning. She wakes up early. Aww. She'll read. I go. I catch her like read in the morning, or then she'll do it um, in the in the evening. Or I'm more so like. Do you guys have a schedule for your kids? It's really, yeah, pretty we, good. Our schedule, well, yeah. With so the first thing that we were told when we had triplets is keep them on a schedule. Mm -hmm. So um, smart. Cause help, two, Jesus, we need help. We have three, three kids. We don't have an excuse because you travel as much as we do. So we don't know. What we're yeah, doing. well, we have we have like you guys have help. We have a we have a person that helps us, but um, we have a, we have them on a schedule. They get up early, then they you know they do whatever activities, then nap, and then you know. Then they're in bed by like eight or nine or whatever time they go to bed. We have a strict bedtime for our kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What time? Twelve thirty. At night. <laughs> yeah. Twelve thirty a.m. Any parents out there who don't get your kids to bed before twelve? What time do they wake up? Making you feel better. Eleven a.m. They wake up at eleven. But what time? You but you <laughs> go to bed late. My bedtime's two thirty now. We're on California time. Two thirty. <laughs> if we came yeah. here, we'd sound like respectable See, Crystal's parents. A morning, Crystal's like an early morning. Yeah. And her mom too, because her mom comes and helps out in the morning. So yeah, they're on the morning. So am I. I'm awake till two thirty in the morning. Why? I'm a morning person. I, I, you know what we did that really worked I, I for us the other night? I, feel, Listen, I know. We did this the other night. It was we stayed it was up awesome. until we stayed up till five six. or six I working like these on stuff. People. Just, uh, six we watched the sunrise. Clean the house. Slept until noon and felt amazing. 
And our yeah. kids. Yeah. We and woke up with our kids. We found the, the So kids. he yeah. needs six hours sleep. You can keep got it. <laughs> six a.m. Yeah. to twelve. Needs four. Four. Yeah. So I stayed up a we little. Four. Our, we found our sweet spot finally. Like, it's six hours and it's four hours. It's a weird hours. thing. Yeah. That happens like when you get old, old. Right? Oh yeah. Like in your sixties. Nope. Oh yes. That I means you're gonna need like one hour old. sleep later on. You know, I have you done the old old app yet? The face what? thing. Don't no. do that. <laughs> Don't do that. That's pretty sweet. Someone did it I to me. Sean did it to uh, me. He sent me. How do you feel? Did you like it? Um, <laughs> it's kind of scary, isn't it? <laughs> I look like my dad. <laughs> he so looks like his dad, too. <laughs> I also look like um, with Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Did you see the one where uh, like a oh, really no. old person did it? What happened if they did? <laughs> they look like, yeah, it, it, like, it just looks like a bunch of rolls. <laughs> It looked like a, looked like a Star like a Wars Sharpie. character. <laughs> little, little, mean, little bitty, bitty eyes, and then like, just like rolls. Oh, I love it. We did Dead. it to our baby, and he looks like an old woman. Does he? <laughs> yeah. Do you have the app? Yeah. Oh, wow. We're going to have to get all these guys yeah, we'll in do here it. in that room right now. It'll be fun. Get them all looking old. No, you don't have Did to. you do it? Like, you didn't do it. Yeah, Josh put me on. <laughs> I don't, I don't think we have to. You know, I don't know. I have doesn't weird, believe in age I or have time weird beliefs. or death. I don't think, well, why do we have to die if Jesus can heal everything? Like, what's the point? Like, unless we just want to die one day. It's just, okay, I'm ready. Like, what, if we I'm can, just waiting for the rapture. Like, at what point do you stop going, okay, Lord, heal? <laughs> You're like, oh, it's okay. Oh, just it's go ahead and go to heaven. We I don't want to be 100 why? years old. We were celebrating, we our, we were celebrating <laughs> Atticus's first birthday a couple weeks ago, uh-huh. and my grandma is 98. Yeah. And I said, Grandma, do you know if you live to be 100, the president's going to call you to wish you happy birthday? She's 98. She goes, Oh, Josh, I hope I don't live to be 100. <laughs> oh, Granny. I was like, Why are you so okay? Sad. Why are you so sad? It's like, you know what I mean? You don't want to live that long. No, listen, listen. This thing, in the That's Bible, a- let me just go back to the scriptures here. Yes. Okay, because the Bible says Genesis. Moses and Joshua yeah. and Caleb, they were 80 years old. They were just like they were 40. Yeah. They didn't have weak eyes. They didn't have, they were, they were all about it. You have, know, they were strong. Have just you been like to Bogota, Colombia? No. Have you seen the pollution there? No. It's, you can't even breathe. Okay. It's all the all the crazy stuff in the air. Well, you know what it's the Bible whole, says. It says different. you can only live to be 120 now. The Bible, no, whole it said different time. No, it that's does. just talking about g- in general for the well. race of man. But but listen, it's in the days of Noah, in the last days, they lived to be 900, right? Mm-hmm. So who knows what's going to happen now? But also about the pollution. Let's go back to the Bible. <laughs> What did the prophet do when the water was bitter and, and death in the water? What did he do? He threw, some, in it. threw something in there and it made it clean. Okay, well, so you need to go to Columbia and tell them because it is bad. Really? Yeah, you it's, know. He might be script? sending it's you. It's gnarly. I just got back <laughs> a week ago. It was gnarly. It was amazing. Revival broke out, but it was... Uh, it was. It starts with the spirit and then manifested to the physical. So they one had, day. They had all the... Uh, they, they're high. They're like 13,000 square feet. Or that's elevation. thirteen thousand foot elevation. Elevation. Yeah, elevation. So they got wind. Well, that's why it's hard to breathe. It's really it was, it was really nice. Yeah, you got that hard to breathe stuff, but then they don't have anything registered for like the smog. So you're constantly smelling it smells like a like a exhaust, you know. It's gnarly, but it's so beautiful there, it's amazing. Wow. Amazing. And God was just just uh just moving. But that's a whole wow. nother story. That's awesome. So okay, I was on iTunes and I was looking up your music and there was like a song out. Oh, yeah. Guess so, what? Tomorrow, well, today's what? Saturday, so... So what do people look up? Reflect Love Back. On iTunes. On iTunes, so Spotify, and there's a Google song, Play. There's a song out now. Yeah, it's called The Return. That was okay. the first That's song the first that we song. wrote for that. That was a good one. You know, it was cool because with the 12-week study, we ended up writing 12 songs. Um, yeah. Um, and then when it so was that, over... Good. Yeah, so this, the, each song goes along with that week's message. Yeah. Or that what that week's about. And so we end up with 12 yeah. as, a, as a soundtrack to the video devotional. This is the first time, Ryan, that we've done. Everything we've ever done has been, we've never done anything, I guess, for the Christian market or for believers. We've always just done stuff for everybody. Yes. Um, this I, is the f- first thing that I feel like we've done specifically, not just the CD, the music, because it was birthed from the study, but it's like, I feel like the first thing we've done for the Christian community. And, and really, it, it's it's for everybody, but it, but it was birthed out of Christian community in our house. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's where it came from. So I don't, I wouldn't necessarily call it a worship album because I don't, you know, whenever you bring us out here, a lot of churches will invite me and Lacey to come out. They're like, you guys lead worship? We're like, 
Um, does, I don't know that we lead it doesn't worship. Doesn't always fit into yeah. that category, you know I mean? yeah. but we'll, we'll play some songs and do yeah. what we do. I don't know if it's leading worship. Yeah, we um, worship when we do it. Yeah, we worship. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not like corporate it's, worship. It doesn't like, okay, sound like the song. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you, we sang the Psalms in church, sometimes that would be not feel like worship either. It's true. <laughs> so it's not necessarily has to be. Defeat my enemies. <sighs> well, yeah, that's a good song, actually. I want to write that song. Lord, crush the Lord, teeth crush of my the enemy. Te- crush the teeth of my enemies. Break the teeth that of my enemies. I should be on Caleb. So I don't, <laughs> That's I don't see this. That's a positive encouraging I don't see the album. Kayla. Well, it's not under. You're looking at Lacey Sturm. Oh. It's, okay. It's Reflect Love Back. Um, so it's under that. Yeah, it's under. So yeah, so this is not like the follow up to Lacey's album. This is a completely different. Yeah, project. this is not a Lacey Sturm rock album. This is just the soundtrack, and it's called there Reflect Love. There it is. Lo- so it's it, on there. The full album gets released tomorrow. So every um, so it will Sunday be night. I already have it. I know people. Okay. Well, I can send you the link if you don't have it. How long has um, it been? I have it. You sent it to me. What's cool about this album, it's acoustic, and it's with like 12 or 15 of our close friends who've done the study, who've been part of our lives, who sing along with it. So it's very much like, sounds like Lacey and 15 people singing along with her. Um, I never thing, heard it. I've never heard a, a, a sound like this where it actually captures what it feels like when you're in the room with yeah. people, when they're all singing together, uh, like as a, in like a, in your living room. Yeah. I never heard a sound like that. I can't believe we were able well, to. Well, the, the, the like, lyrics are gnarly. They Good. are. It's everything about it. Deep. Is, it's, it's powerful. Well, what's cool about it to me, and I posted this on my Instagram, but I was like, everything that we've ever done in music is like, you go to a studio and you work on songs and you write and you produce and you polish it, you know what I mean? Do several takes of it. This concept was basically Lacey and I would wake up in the morning, meet with God, get a guitar. I would play four simple chords, and she would just worship and write lyrics, and then we would film and record the song later that day. And that was it. it. That's it. Done. You know, it's like, could the song have been better? Probably. Yes. Could we have redone that vocal part or changed this and kind of mumbled the lyric? Yeah, we could have. But, like, we just wanted to capture what was happening. The spirit was there. And we just wanted to release it that way. And so, like... Dude, that's dope. It was... Yeah. I like this project. It was unique. We're going to do another one for the next 12 weeks. But for now, this one comes out. So how, how long... It took you 12 weeks to actually to produce this? Yeah, well, a lot of them we wrote... Yeah. So we write one song a month for it. So, like, if you searched... It's not like the Lacey Music yeah. project. Um, it's its 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 own thing. Reflect Love Back is its own thing. It's its own community um, it's it's gonna have its own music, and it won't. I don't think necessarily. My dream is that it won't necessarily always be just me as the main person, mm. um, because what we like every for a long time now we've been doing Friday Sunday night live streams on Facebook, and there's a t- a part in the in the live stream where we'll start playing one of the songs, and then we'll just sit on the notes on the guitar. The the guitar will just keep playing, and I won't sing. And I'll ask the people who are face or who are on the live stream to to put up lyrics that they're hearing in their heads, or or a scripture prayer. or a prayer that they're praying, and um, and then I'll just sing that over the 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 guitar chords. And so a, a, it's almost like every Sunday for a long time we've been we've had these new songs that come out of the same you know uh, yeah. chords that we've written for the songs. I also imagine it's a really cool thing too to like someone like Lacey that you love as a singer to write a lyric and it comes up and she reads it and sings it out loud yeah that's pretty you know it's like oh Oh, yeah like it's such a cool your your lyric is important and then if you feel the lord's presence coming because of something you wrote then you know that god is speaking through you yeah Yeah. and that's really why i do it because i want them to be a no that you hear from the Lord too, yeah. and it's beneficial to everybody. So when I sing out what they've written, I want them to know that was important to share, you know, because people always look at the one person talking. Yeah. Yeah. But if we had like, so so That's what? Pretty cool. So what Reflect Love Back hopefully will be is a community of of people that are sharing, and that's kind of what you hear on the. So people, everyone, get plugged in. Head to the website reflectloveback.com and download this uh, whole album tomorrow. <laughs> well, by so the time are, you hear us, it's are available. You, are you download you, it now. Oh, they can download it now. Right? Today's yeah. Saturday. Wink, wink. Well, I got it. I'm lying. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to be released. <laughs> so tomorrow I'll have it in my phone. Aww, Aww, thanks, thanks. So I I, another you. question. Are you guys touring, speaking? 
Yeah, we are. You know, you're doing some one-off stuff. Are you guys doing any tours? Tours, tours. So band tours, like rocking out, headbanging tours. Um, we're gonna do both. Lo- reflect love back. Yeah, we're back. gonna do both. So tours, rock tours. I feel like mm-hmm. kind of. I said this a little bit ago when when churches ask us to come speak and lead worship, we're like, well, we kind of don't do that. Well, yeah. now we actually have songs that are sort of worship songs, you know, in that way. And so I feel like that's going to be I could be a lot more concise when people ask us to come to their church. Usually they want to hear Lacey's testimony and they want us to play music. Well, now we actually have like specific songs that we can that we can so do. So we may that. we may do speaking acoustic stuff, but also we are working on yeah, other rock. things. Yeah, we've got six songs. Rock I saw songs. something on Instagram. I think you said yeah, it's time well, for music or something. Well, Lacey, yeah, we've been. I mean, we teased because Lacey went out in January with Corey Cooper. You remember Corey? I and saw a fo- video. So yep. that was one stop or a couple? She just Some went skillet. out for three days. They wrote six really good rock songs for the Lacey album, follow up to Life Screams. We're just. Um, <laughs> and like they cranked them out in three days. And so, like, I feel like if I sent her back, she could write six more really quickly. Oh, it's yeah. Like, it was just a couple of days. It's fun because Corey is amazing at writing music and to be able to just have fun and write lyrics to the song she writes is really So you take all the really kids fun, when you go? Really easy. I just sent I had Atticus with me. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, go anywhere without him. You had one kid. Just yeah, just you and one kid. Yeah. But honestly, that's what our last year has kind of been with the baby. You know, it's just getting having three kids now, which you you know what that's like, but we didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> just having the baby and learning. kind of actually really developing Reflect Love Back has been a lot we did last year. And so just now we're starting to come out of that and work on music again. And I don't know what touring is going to look like. Obviously, we w- the only reason we want to tour is because we feel like God calls us to tour, to go out, to perform, yeah. and to, you know, uh, so, yes. there's something different about seeing people and singing the songs, obviously, than like them getting the album and hearing it. All I know is I went to your guys' last concert in L.A. Yeah. With Red. Know, life, stri- life, screams. life Screams. With Red, yeah. yes. Uh-huh. And I, it was like bittersweet. I was like, yes, this is amazing. God's moving. I, the presence is here. Wow. Sounds amazing. You're pregnant. I go, baby's coming. All yeah. Right. So this is getting shut down. <laughs> so well, I'm like, yes. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> it was like, you know you know that right. feeling yeah. yeah well we've been praying about that like god do you want us to continue to play in a rock band do well you, do you want us we'll to just, continue to tour we'll just put this out there you know if anybody wants to buy us a, a touring vehicle then we'll go out yeah. and as long as we'll tour as, prevo x2 yeah. x3 something like so that, we're asking jesus listening. for that because you know <laughs> black. the thing is black the thing is out. well if there was a way that's where the cost it costs money but it's for the the rental of the the tour event yeah that's, that's yeah. where the money goes touring buses are and, expensive and yeah. the thing is for us to be able to prioritize our family and make it comfortable for them homeschooling yeah. our boys to be able to tour that way would be easy and we would do that but yeah. if if that's not available we're going to choose to prioritize our family yeah. you know but yeah. if but we can do it on the road we've done it and it's great and it's easy and our kids love touring but uh, you need the right circumstance and vehicle and yeah. crew. Because yeah. you, li- you live on that bus. You live on that yeah. bus. And uh, and you can't leave without, you can't, you have to have, you, with the kids, your age of the kids, you have to have them. And you're doing homeschool the whole yeah, thing. So it's, not even, it's not even an option. I mean, yeah. I'm 37 and both Lacey and I would get in a van and travel the country. Yeah. But, like there's something that like, the Lord is just kind of, I don't know if he's correcting us on, but he's just like, you're grown now, and I want you to travel like grown adults. <laughs> to not, you know, to not. You're not a garage band playing, playing, yeah. and you know, sleeping on hotel floors. It has to do with our kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like it has to do with a priority of just prioritizing yeah. our kids and our family, yeah. and putting them first. Which you know, the whole music industry is very difficult to do. And that ministry you don't too. Bring them with you. Oh, and, yeah. and ministry. You know, yeah. you travel a lot, and so yeah. that's kind of where we're at right now with all of it. But I'll play you some new songs f- off air. Okay. Good. Good. I feel you. I feel you on all that. I know. I'm like, I want to travel with my family. Yes. But right now, I mean, we have a new one coming. We're not even in the in the. In the we were we were thinking about getting on a plane one time with the with the triplets at two years old, and we're like, and then I went to my chiropractor, and he's like, he's like, I just went to Hawaii with my one year old, three and like a five year old, and yeah. he's all the, the the one year old that never cries or something. Yeah. Basically, they they got on the plane. They gave out notes. Sorry, we have a kid. And basically what happened is that their baby, the baby that never cries, cried the whole way. Mm. He said, I gave him melatonin to go to sleep. The baby cried louder, 
Like it was like this crazy experience. So me and Chris are like, we're not traveling, mm. not right now on planes. <laughs> we do car trips. Yeah. yeah, car trips. Cars are hard too, even. The cars, but the but you can pull over and get them to a park. Like yeah, yeah I'm run. That's true. You can get them out on a plane. You're like. There. Stuck. Yeah, dude, we did the airplane to Australia with a six-month-old. For when Pod was, we went out with you Pod. Did? It was like a twenty-two-hour flight with him. That was rough. It was okay. I don't really remember. Much. I remember. It stuck, <laughs> I remember. It stuck with me. Yeah. Scarred. For we life. can go wherever God says go, and if not, you know, we're okay to stay home. We so also enlarges we, your capacity. I mean, yes, you'll that's see. I true. remember probably the first week of having triplets, you were not sure what to do, but now I can probably see you just juggling while yeah. taking them we're, out we're, we're, you know? we're running yeah. around yeah you just run them wild they're they're yeah. uh yeah no the first when we first got pregnant that was that was crazy because like every 30 minutes you had to wake up and feed one and then clean, clean the diaper but the way it worked is they were all they were on schedule so like right when you're done feeding to the diaper then you put one down and you pick up the other one yeah so it was constant it, oh, yeah, yeah, with yeah. the way the three were th- there was basically no breaks it was just con- constant until they got out of that stage, you know, wow. they grew a little bit more. Oh, and I wish I could have been there to help you guys. Oh, uh, no one, no one told us. If I wish, if I could go back in time, I wish someone would have said, "Hire help for that first part." Right. Food. Me and Crystal are like, she'd get up, I'd be like, "Tag team, go." Then she goes to sleep. Then I'd do it. Oh. I switch. It was like this constant. You're a good husband, right? Yeah. It, it was crazy. It was awesome. Yes, but they're are. awesome. I wish you guys could see them while you're here, but we'll, we'll see Maybe how that goes. So. Send us a video of them shooting each other with those squirt guns we got. <laughs> oh, yes. All them shooting daddy. They're, they're, all, they're all about it right now. I'm telling you. They love it. So we have a couple minutes left. Um, anything else? So Okay, so rock music is in the mix. Yep. We don't know when. You got Your CD is coming out tomorrow. Reflect on, Love Back. On all outlets. All outlets. And uh, get to the website, dot, uh, reflectlove.com, bat, reflectloveback.com, and then um, what else? We're working on a script right now for oh, yeah. for a movie about the reason, the first book. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, a script for a movie. Well, it's not. Uh, it's, it's, we're writing with a script writer guy. That's awesome. He's doing really good. So please pray for us about that because when I read it, I'm like, wow, God is moving in this. And there's little details I need to fix and things, but it could happen. You guys got a platform. We're working on it. You can get in front of the right people. We've had a lot of offers to do a feature film for her story, her testimony story. Yeah. But none of them, they all kind of fell through and didn't seem right. This guy happened to be in Pittsburgh. We've been meeting with him. And so, like, we're, it's looking really good. We're really excited about it. Yep. All right. So pray about that for us. So check it out, family online. If you guys want to catch uh, this as a past show or any of the other shows for the last three years, download the whosoever's app. They're all uploaded. It's all free. It's all good. We have product. When you buy our products, it supports our mission to continue to tour the high schools. Um, we are in the middle of a worldwide revival. So, uh, keep us in prayer and I'll talk to you guys uh, next Saturday. Love you guys. Peace. This has been live with Ryan race. To connect or find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.